with the events of the past 12 months making it increasingly difficult and at times impossible to get out and do the photography that we love, many of us have been looking closer to home for that creative spark. And where better than our own back gardens to take some images of the fantastic wildlife. In this three-part series, I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up over the past 12 months to help you to get sharper, well composed and better garden bird photos. Well good morning and welcome to the vlog. As you can see I'm in the hide which means only one thing, this is a uh, bird photography vlog. Um, it's a bit of a chilly one this morning actually. We've had a few days of um, sort of mildish weather but today is uh, the cold's back with a vengeance which is not a bad thing because I don't mind a bit of cold as long as it's uh, quite still which it is. Now this vlog today is going to be all about um, some aspects of how I've set things up for garden bird photography because I've had quite a few people ask me about how I managed to get the photos I get how I managed to get them so sharp and also the settings and setup etc and for me it's more than a just a, a question of technique it's also a question of three things really I think the first part is what I'm going to call preparation and observation the second thing is then the technique and the third part is the post-processing and possibly as well thinking about the composition of the shot. So in this video I'm going to talk about preparation and observation. Got a little friend. I've got a little friend this morning. Look. This is my setup behind me here, and as you can see, I've got a couple of tree branches that I've used that I sawed down from the from the trees here, um, which is handy. And this really is about the only place I could set this up because I've got my hide sort of looking over this way and it's about about the only place really I could put the hide and so this is the perfect spot really to get some nice depth because there's a bit behind the perches which will give me a bit of depth of field in the photos and also it's close enough to the trees that I think the birds feel safe so they can they generally tend to have a look around in the trees first and then hop down and in terms of actual photographic opportunity in terms of the perches you can have a look there's one two three four five. it's about ten different perches there that the birds can use now that may prove to be a problem if you're using a tripod because you may want to limit the amount of opportunity or the places that the bird can land but for me I like variety so I've got plenty there and in addition to that I've also got some logs that are in this box here and a stump that the birds can the ground feeders can come and sit on and uh, eat and they've all got holes drilled in the actual logs themselves so they can come and eat uh, and there's space for those and all of those all of these little stand up bits on these logs are all separated out so they've all got their own individual backgrounds and they all work they're not looking back onto another log or onto the onto a tree stump there for instance they've all got their own background and in addition to that i've also got down here which you can't quite see uh, a bird bath and laying across that is a, a, a mossy log so the birds can also come and have a drink sit on this log and uh, yeah and get some more shots there as well
Now, when I was setting this up, I didn't really have an option as to where to put these perches, that it's either there really or nowhere. But if you do have an opportunity to think about where you're going to put your perches, then you might want to take into account light because that is incredibly important in bird photography. So, for instance, it, for me, it would be perfect if the, if the sun came round this way and basically I had a whole day of light onto the background and light onto the birds themselves but also side light so when the sun started to drop you get some nice golden side light coming across here but unfortunately that's not the case the sun in my instance comes over the back there so I get quite harsh shadows at times directly onto the front of the birds so actually sometimes it's better to shoot when, it, when it's a bit cloudy so thinking about where you're going to put the perches in terms of the light and the way that the light casts on it is often not a bad idea at all now my garden's not exactly the biggest, but I can imagine that there are many gardens that are smaller than this and probably in a more urban environment than this. I mean, I'm lucky. I've got, like I said, I've got some mature trees. I've got a little bit of space between my hide and my, my shooting and a little bit of space behind uh, to give quite a nice dropped out background. But even if you're in a, a garden where you've got no, no trees or shrubs at all, then you can still put a feeding station in and then maybe get yourself a, a tripod or, or a light stand and clamp some, some branches to that to give yourself some opportunities to get the birds in a more natural looking environment. And if you haven't got much of a backdrop, then try a bit of scrim netting or something just to, just to drop behind and um, yeah, just use that as a background. That can be quite effective at times. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And finally, let's talk about food, presenting food, and also the food that I use. So in terms of presenting food, when we're talking about the, the logs, I've, I've learned through experience that the best way to present the food in the logs really is to drill holes in on the blind side of the, of the log, so out of view of the camera, if you like, and just drop the food into the holes, and then the birds will come and peck at the food but you won't be able to see it in the shot. But several times, like on the log, I still haven't really done it on the log, but on the, uh, on the, um, on the stump, I still haven't really done it on there. But I should drill holes in there because I can only really lay the food on the flat surface and it's really obvious. So if you get a nice shot, often you've either got to clone the food out or just deal with the fact that it's there, which kind of takes away from it being their natural environment because that's what you're aiming to get really. You're aiming to make it look like it's the bird's natural environment. Um, and then when it comes to the feeders, um, what you really need to do is you need to hang the feeders below the higher perches because what tends to happen is the birds, they come in and they'll land on the high perches and then they'll drop down to the feeders. So it's when they first come in and land on those higher perches that you get the opportunity to get the shot. You don't really want to take a shot of them on the feeder. I mean, you can do sometimes if you're trying to tell a story, but generally, well, I am generally trying to find the most natural looking poses for them and they're not really usually on feeders so and when we're talking about food well i've got lots of food out i've got general seed out i've got suet balls out i've got peanuts out i've got uh, sunflower hearts out i've used suet pellets before and i've also used um, uh, dried mealworms and all times of the year they come from most of that at different points um, except for the peanuts, which I found are not really eating at all, but I'm kind of hoping for a woodpecker, so I'll leave them out. Uh, but the one that they seem to go for all the time, and pretty much all the birds go for, are the sunflower hearts. So I tend to put all the feeders out with the different options in, but all the drill holes I'm now filling with sunflower hearts, because they are the ones that the birds tend to want to come and eat, basically. And then once you've got all your perches and your bits and pieces set out in that respect, you then need to start thinking about the background because the background is incredibly important in bird photography. You don't want something that's going to distract away from the birds. You want something that's going to 
something very neutral and something that's very easily blurred out if you like so the birds can be really the star of the show so for me I've got three backgrounds really that I've focused on I've got this large one here which is where all of my perches are sighted and I've got the logs in the box at the bottom and basically I've got a background that's ivy um, and just an old fence but very dark very green there's a little bit of an issue on the left hand side where I've got some trees but you can't can't do anything about that really um, but the tree is quite useful especially in the winter actually because it becomes quite bare and it's a lot of the birds use those as perches so you can actually get shots directly on those trees but the tree on the left isn't great but I've set everything up so all of my places where I'm looking and thinking right there's a little branch sticking up there or there's a tree stump there or there's a little knob you know a little nodule there that's where I want the birds to sit and they've got nice clean backgrounds so that's what I'm aiming at there really just to try and get a nice background and then the second background I've got is this nice sort of greeny yellowy bush that seems to not drop its leaves during the winter which is quite nice and that is closer than I would like it to this log that I've got sort of pushed across the, the water uh, the bird bath but you've got to, one thing you've got to remember when you're shooting with a, a, a nice long lens is that it doesn't have to be a huge distance to get some quite nice bokeh so even though that's probably only 30 40 centimeters at some points behind the, the, the log where the, the birds are going to sit it's still blurred enough that it can get quite nice shots and the fact that it's yellow and green and the leaves are quite sort of interesting does make for a nice background something a bit unique so that kind of works and the third background that I have here in the winter months are actually the houses behind this garden so above the ivy there's a set of trees and basically they lose their leaves in the winter and the house behind becomes the background and it's this nice orange brick and when the sun's shining on it and you catch the birds especially something like a blue tip in the trees and you've got this lovely orange glow behind it can look really nice even though it's like a completely man-made structure but it's so out of focus that you can't really tell what it is And the final thing I want to talk about today is observation. It may seem like it's not as important as prepping everything and getting your technique right and getting your focus right. But the point is, if you watch the birds long enough that you can start to predict their behaviour and their actions, you're going to be in a much better position when it comes to being prepared to take the shot. So sitting and watching is actually really quite important and observing their behaviour because you get to learn their flight paths, you get to learn their favourite landing spots and all of this helps you when it comes to getting the shot. So if you can watch a bird, watch it up in the trees, watch its behaviour, watch its movements, try and learn to predict when it's going to fly down and where it's going to land, you can be ready, already focused on that point to get the shot. And uh, it does help, believe me, it really does help. I tend to find that if I focus in on the birds and watch them sitting in the trees behind, they they give off these little visual cues as to what they're going to do. So if they're if they're singing, for instance, they're not likely to be moving for a while. But then they start to look around, which is quite interesting. And then you can see them, and they start to sort of almost lean forward as if they're going to go they're going to go and then that's when usually they fly down to either the perch or down onto the logs or onto the feeder and you can kind of predict when they're going to do that by the actions that they're 
performing in the trees. And of course, the other thing to bear in mind is that different birds, different bird species have totally different behavior. So for instance, the blue tip, what they tend to do is they'll sit up in the trees waiting for an opportunity and then they'll fly straight down onto the feeder, take the seed and then go back up into the trees and hold the seed between their claws and eat it. So unless the feeders are busy or you get quite lucky, often the blue tits don't really land on the perches or on any of the, the logs that, you, that you've got. They tend to come straight into the feeder and straight back out. So your best chance of shots for them really are generally in the trees. It's a little bit different when it's busy. So when it's a bit busier, they might hop onto a perch and wait for the feeder to clear. But generally they're in and out. So you've got to spot them coming in and try and sort of pretty much either get them while they're waiting to come down while they're looking to make sure it's clear or get them once they've gone back up into a tree and they start eating because otherwise you're just going to take a photo of a blue tit on a feeder and if you take something like the sparrow then they're a completely different species in terms of the way that they behave so what they'll do is well, from my experience they tend to hang around in sort of largest groups sort of four five six more and they'll send a couple of scouts out and those scouts will come and sit on the very top perch here and have a look around and make sure everything's safe and it's okay and they'll send a signal back to the rest of the birds to say yeah you're fine and then they'll come and eat so what you can do then is you can either take advantage of those outliers and get some shots of them sitting on the high perches or you can wait for the rest to come in and then they're all over. I mean, they feed off the feeders, they feed off the logs, they feed off the floor. So you've got lots of opportunities there. And it's interesting as well to note that birds like sparrows and starlings and the robin, they often spend quite a lot of time on the perches that have been set up and they'll hop from perch to perch before they actually go onto the feeder. Whereas something like uh, the blue tit, as I mentioned, or the black cap, generally they're in the trees behind and then straight onto the feeder and then straight off occasionally they might come and sit on the perches but for not a very long amount of time so you've got to be really ready so you've got to really sort of wait for those birds wait for the likes of the blue tit and the black cap to be up in the trees and then be like on your guard and watching and ready for them to come and fly down land on the perch and try and get them as quickly as you can Whereas something like a sparrow or a robin, you've got a little bit more time. And finally, I think probably one of the most important things, regardless of the setup and the observation and the technique and the focus and the equipment, one of the things that you really need, one of your main skills needs to be patience. Because bird photography is generally a waiting game. It's very, very rare that you sit here, you come out, you sit here and you get a shot within the first five ten twenty minutes half an hour you know often like right now for instance the birds are singing but there are no birds in sight there's no birds on the perches <laughs> as a collared dove turns up there's no birds on the perches there's no birds on the feeders there's no birds anywhere in sight except for the collared dove and even then even with it being there there it goes even with the birds there you've still got to wait be patient for them to basically appear on the, the particular perch or branch or log or twig or whatever it is that you're waiting for them to sit on and then they've got to be in the right pose and then they've got to be facing the right way and then you've got to focus on getting the eye sharp and you know it's a it's a it's definitely a, a waiting game and a game of patience um, more than anything else and if you could master that, really, then you're three quarters of the way to getting a decent shot. Anyway, I think we'll wrap it up for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Next time, we'll talk about gear and technique and focusing and settings and all of those things that will help you to improve your photography. But without the setup, without the preparation and without observing the birds and learning how they behave the rest of it's really not that important so i hope that you take this info on board and i hope that you found it useful and uh i'll leave you 
with some shots that I took in the snow a couple of weeks ago. See you next time. Thank you.